This is Heather. I'm here with a new series called Relationship CPR. I have some books and resources that I've utilized to put this presentation together that I'm going to show you that might be really helpful for you. by Renee Barron and Elizabeth Wagle. And this is a really uh, great place to start for someone who knows nothing about the Enneagram. It's very simply written. It's got some funny, witty stuff in it. Uh, and it doesn't get, you don't get bogged down in the complexities or the comprehensiveness of it. The Wisdom of the Enneagram by Don Richard Riso and Russ Hudson. This is the Bible of the Enneagram. If you are wanting to dive deeper uh, this is a great place for you to go. It is very well written. It's great information. It's easy to understand, but it is very complex and it is comprehensive. So depending on where you are in your journey, both of these might be helpful for you at some point. This is a new thing that I just got. Um, it's a set of cards. It's 125 cards for self-awareness and connection. This is by Jackie Brewster. Enneagram Essentials is what it's called. And it's got several sections that describe all of the different things uh, about the different numbers in a really uh, short and concise way. This would be a really fun thing for someone to have in their home. I don't know, maybe to talk about when guests come over or maybe at family dinner, but I find this really helpful um, to just get a quick amount of information that's really well organized into certain sections. Just a, a brief summary about different things. So all of these are really great resources that you all might want to check out. Don't stop the video yet. <laughs> this is some really great information. One of the most valuable things that I've learned along the way is that it turns out as opposed to pointing the finger at someone else, really the best way to improve ourselves and our lives is to look within. And so I have put together this presentation and I'm going to be putting on a complete series based on this Enneagram. I'm going to first do an overview video, which this is going to be, and do a brief description of each one of the types. And then I'm gonna go uh, and do a video about each different type. And then we're gonna dive a little bit deeper about each. And what I'm hoping to do with this is to give you some tools that will help you in your own what, whatever you've got going on, but also with all of your relationships, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your partner, your children, at work. This is some really amazing stuff. And so I really recommend you um, hanging in there and uh, listening to this very short video that I'm gonna do first to just learn about the overall view of the whole system. And then once I get the videos out about each type, then, then you can decide which type you are and then you can dive deeper into those types. So I'm excited that you're here. Thank you so much for listening. Please click subscribe. Please share this video with anybody that you feel like might benefit. And please go to my website, lookwithinholisticcoaching.com. One very valuable piece of information that I've gleaned along the way is that in order to improve your relationships and your life as a consequence, you must look within. As humans, we have the tendency to want to protect ourselves, and one of the ways in which we do this in relationships is by shining a light on the faults of the other person, seeing all of the things that are wrong with them or faults they have. Although this is one approach that you can try in relationships, I have not seen it be very effective. Finger pointing, self-righteousness, if they would just blah blah blah, or if they would not blah blah blah. Now this is not what most people want to hear, but it is the truth. In order to be our best in all areas, we must first remember who we are, who we are authentically at our core. When we are born, we are the purest forms of ourselves, our truest, most authentic self, untainted by any outside person, force, or experience. Riso and Hudson do an amazing job of explaining this in the wisdom of the Enneagram. The core truth that the Enneagram conveys to us is that we are much more than our personality. Our personalities are no more than the familiar, conditioned parts of a much wider range of potentials that we all possess. Beyond the limitations of our personalities, each of us exists as a vast, largely unrecognized quality of being or presence, what is called our essence. 
In spiritual language, we could say that within each person is an individual spark of the divine. Although we have forgotten this fundamental truth because we have fallen asleep to our true nature, we do not experience our own divine nature, nor do we experience others as manifestations of the divine. Instead, we often become hard, even cynical, treating others as objects to be defended against or used for our gratification. Most of us have some notion about what personality is, but the idea of essence is probably foreign to us. When we talk about essence, we mean it in the literal sense of the word. What we fundamentally are, our essential self, the ground of being in us. Our personality is a particular aspect of our soul, and our soul is made of essence. If spirit were water, soul would be a particular lake or river, and personality would be the waves on its surface, or frozen chunks of ice in the river. Generally, we do not experience our essence and its many aspects because our awareness is so dominated by personality. But as we learn to bring awareness to our personality, it becomes more transparent and we are able to experience our essence more directly. We still function in the world, but with a growing realization of our connection with divinity. We become aware that we are part of a divine presence all around us and in us that is constantly and miraculously unfolding. The Enneagram can help us see what prevents us from remembering this deep truth about who we really are. Remember, the Enneagram does not put us in a box. It shows us the box we are already in and the way out. The good news is, it's not really as hard as most people think. Can it be? Absolutely. Will it be? Maybe. The Enneagram is a remarkably complex and comprehensive system that can take us as far as you want it to go, but even at the superficial level can be extremely helpful. The Enneagram is an ancient personality typology system which not only tells you what your personality type is, but it tells you why it is the way it is, and then shines light on your blind spots so that you can begin to become more aware of your own patterns and reactions which will in turn improve your relationships and your life. The exact origin is unknown, but it dates back at least to 4th century AD. It was brought to the United States in the 1960s. The name Enneagram means a drawing with nine points. These nine points represent the nine different personality types within the system. In the wisdom of the Enneagram, Riso and Hudson say, one of the profound lessons of the Enneagram is that psychological integration and spiritual realization are not separate processes. Without spirituality, psychology cannot really free us or lead us to the deepest truths about ourselves. And without psychology, spirituality can lead to grandiosity, delusion, and an attempt to escape from reality. The Enneagram is neither dry psychology nor fuzzy mysticism, but a tool for transformation that uses the clarity and insight of psychology as a point of entry into the profound and universal spirituality. Thus, in a literal sense, the Enneagram is the bridge between psychology and spirituality. The core of this sacred psychology is that our basic type reveals the psychological mechanisms by which we forget our true nature, our divine essence, the way in which we abandon ourselves. Our personalities draw upon the capacities of our inborn temperament to develop defenses and compensations for where we have been hurt in childhood. In order to survive whatever difficulties we encountered at that time, we unwittingly mastered a limited repertoire of strategies, self-images, and behaviors that allowed us to cope with and survive in our early environment. Each of us, therefore, has become an expert at a particular form of coping, which if used excessively also becomes the core of dysfunctional area of our personality. As the defenses and strategies of our personality become more structured, they cause us to lose contact with our direct experience, ourselves, our essence. The personality becomes the source of our identity rather than contact with our being. Our sense of ourselves is based increasingly on internal images, memories, and learned behaviors rather than on spontaneous expression of our true nature. This loss of contact with our essence causes deep anxiety taking the form of one of the nine passions. Once in place, these passions, which are usually unconscious and invisible to us, begin to drive the personality. Understanding our personality type and its dynamics, therefore, offers an especially potent approach to the unconscious, to our wounds and compensations, and ultimately, to our healing and transformation. 
The Enneagram shows us where our personality most trips us up. It highlights both what is possible for us as well as how self-defeating and unnecessary many of our old reactions and behaviors are. This is why when we identify with the personality, we are settling on being much less than who we really are. It is as though we are given a mansion to live in with rich furnishings and beautifully kept grounds, but have confined ourselves to a small dark closet in the basement. Most of us have even forgotten that the rest of the mansion exists or that we are really its owner. As spiritual teachers through the ages have pointed out, we have fallen asleep to ourselves and to our own lives. Most of the day we walk around preoccupied by ideas, anxieties, worries, and mental pictures. Seldom are we present to ourselves and to our immediate experience. As we begin to work on ourselves, however, we begin to see that our attention has been taken or magnetized by the preoccupations and features of our personality, and that we are actually sleepwalking through much of life. This view of things is contrary to common sense and often feels insulting to the way we see ourselves, as self-determining, conscious, and in control. At the same time, our personality is not bad. Our personality is an important part of our development and is necessary for for the refinement of our essential nature. The problem is that we become stuck in personality and do not know how to move on to the next phase. This is not the result of any inherent flaw in ourselves. Rather, it is an arrested development that occurs because almost no one in our formative years was aware that any more was possible. Our parents and teachers may have had some glimmers of their true nature, but like us, they generally did not recognize them, much less live as expressions of them. Thus, one of the most transformational insights that the Enneagram can provide is the realization that we are not our personality. To begin to grasp this is to undergo a transformation of our sense of self. When we begin to understand that we are not our personality, we also begin to realize that we are spiritual beings who have a personality and who are manifesting themselves through that personality. When we stop identifying with our personality and stop defending it, a miracle happens. Our essential nature spontaneously arises and transforms us. There are nine personality types, each defined by what is called the childhood wound. In a nutshell, something happened in childhood, maybe in our family system, that caused you to develop certain patterns, defense mechanisms, behaviors, etc. It happened to all of us. Nobody escaped. From this event, our personalities were born and the patterns that started in childhood persist into adulthood. None of the personality types are better or more important than the other. They are simply all unique in their own way. These types do not define you. You are who you are. But due to the aforementioned childhood wound, each of us tend toward one type. And then we integrate other types based on our position on the Enneagram. There are many ways to figure out your type. I was told by one of my colleagues to not take a test because they are not necessarily accurate, and I have found this to be true. I have two suggestions. The first is to read through the information in the link below from the Enneagram Institute. This definitely takes the most time and effort. However, after reading summaries of each type, it becomes crystal clear after a while which type you are. People have a tendency to not like what they read regarding the challenges or blind spots of the type they are, and so it can take a while for people to come to the answer. None of the types are better than the other. They are all different and all have equally challenging blind spots. Each type also has amazing attributes. The fastest option is to do the Riso Hudson Quest, the quick Enneagram sorting test. This includes two groups of three paragraphs. The instructions are as follows. Select one paragraph in each of the following two groups of statements that best reflects your general attitudes and behaviors as you have been most of your life. You do not have to agree completely with every word or statement in the paragraph you select. You may agree with only 80-90% to 90 of a particular paragraph and still select that paragraph over the others in the group. However, you should agree with the general tone and overall philosophy of the paragraph you select. You will probably disagree with some sort of each of the paragraphs. Do not reject a paragraph because of a single word or phrase. Again, look at the overall picture. Do not overanalyze your choices. Select the paragraph that your gut feeling says is the right one for you, even though you may not agree with it 100%. The general thrust and feeling of the paragraph as a whole is more important than the individual elements of it. Go with your intuition. 
The two groups of paragraphs will be on the next two slides, so you can pause the video to choose from each. The next slide will show the two-digit codes and which Enneagram number they represent. Once you have selected a letter from each group, 1 and 2, this makes up your two-digit code, which represents your probable Enneagram type. Those types are on the next slide. Now that you know your probable Enneagram type, let's explore a brief description of each. Enneagram 1, the moral perfectionist. Ones are self-disciplined, conscientious, responsible, ethical, serious, and orderly. They feel personally obligated to improve themselves and the world. They want to do what is right while having integrity and remain balanced. In order to avoid criticism or shame, they strive to be consistent with their ideals. Enneagram 2, the supportive advisor. Twos view the world through their connections and relationships. In a way, they define themselves through their service to others. Overall, they are selfless, loving, caring, patient, and giving. They long to connect through safe relationships in which they can express their feelings and emotions without judgment. They seek affection and affirmation, as well as appreciation and respect. Enneagram 3, the determined achiever. Threes are charming, driven, competent, and encouraging people who measure their self-worth through external achievements. They feel as though they are only as good as their next accomplishment. Adaptable and highly competitive, they are driven to succeed and will seek accolades, excellence, and success in many areas. Ultimately, they want to feel valuable and worthwhile. They desire to be affirmed, to distinguish themselves, and to be admired. Enneagram 4, the Romantic Individualist. Fours desire to be authentic and unique. They are intuitive, sensitive, passionate, witty, creative, temperamental, moody, emotional, and self-indulgent. They express themselves in interesting and creative ways in hopes of being set apart and recognized for their differences. They often withdraw to protect themselves and their emotions, and they tend to live in their imaginations and feelings. Enneagram 5, the investigative thinker. Fives long to be capable and competent. They are imaginative, intelligent, witty, sentimental, and private people. They often have a range of knowledge in several different subjects. They desire to be undisturbed by others and do not like to need others' help. Because of this, fives tend to be more introverted and require large amounts of alone time to recharge. Enneagram 6, the loyal guardian. Sixes desire to know they are safe. They are faithful, courageous, loyal, and effective. However, they can at times also be cowardly and paranoid. They look for security, support, and certainty in their relationships as well as in their environments. They seek approval from those in positions of authority and power. They are excellent problem solvers and have a knack for anticipating life's dangers. Enneagram 7, the energetic enthusiast. Sevens love to plan and anticipate positive future events. They tend to be joyful, fun-loving, adventurous, strong, determined individuals who prefer having multiple choices. They want to be happy and satisfied and don't like to be controlled or limited in any way. They are also likely to be well-rounded and affirming. Though they are quick-minded visionaries who love exciting new adventures, they can become escapist when they feel trapped or are stuck in emotional pain. Enneagram 8, the protective challenger. Eights desire to be self-reliant and strong leaders who make an impact on the world. They are competent, assertive, determined, and controlling individuals who cast big ideas and make them happen. They are great protectors of their families, friends, and those in need. Their can-do attitude allows them to take on new challenges and risks with confidence and determination. Enneagram 9, the peaceful mediator. Nines strive to create and keep peace and harmony in their environments. They are caring, compassionate, intentional, and compliant individuals who often downplay their own needs to avoid conflicts and tension. They are loving, down-to-earth, trusting, understanding, and accepting. Overall, they are excellent mediators who listen to all sides of a situation without judgment. To review, Ones are perfectionistic, realistic, conscientious, and principled. They strive for justice and to be good. Twos are helpers, warm, concerned, nurturing, and sensitive to the needs of others. Threes are achievers, energetic, optimistic, self-assured, and goal-oriented. Fours are romantics, sensitive, warm, and perceptive. Fives are observers, knowledge seekers, introverted, curious, analytical, and insightful. 
Sixes are questioners, responsible, trustworthy, value loyalty to family, friends, group, and causes. These personalities range from reserved and timid to outspoken and confrontative. Sevens are adventurers, energetic, lively, and optimistic. They want to contribute to the world. Eights are asserters, direct, self-reliant, self-confident, and protective. Nines are peacemakers and re are receptive, good-natured, and supportive. They seek union with others and the world around them. There are three centers, the heart or feeling center, the head or thinking center, and the gut or instinctive center. The heart center contains twos, threes, and fours. The head center contains fives, sixes, and sevens. And the gut center contains eights, nines, and ones. In this drawing, you can see that each number is connected to the two other numbers with arrows. On one hand, when relaxed and balanced, you take on the positive qualities of one, and on the other hand, when tense and in stress, you take on the negative qualities of the other. Once you begin to understand the patterns of your type, these arrows can be very useful. You can intentionally work toward the positive arrow, and when you recognize your stress patterns, this can be useful for you and for those around you. Your wings are the numbers on either side of you. Your personality can be blended with characteristics from both of these wings. Most people tend toward one wing, but well-balanced individuals at the healthiest end of the personality spectrum integrate the most positive qualities of each wing. As you explore your personality type using the Enneagram, you will start to see and understand your patterns of behavior that you fall back on when stressed or overwhelmed. This awareness allows you to start seeing this with curiosity instead of judging and shaming yourself for your behaviors. And this leads to transformation. As my life coach Kate Ingram says, Awareness plus non-judgment equals transformation. With this awareness, you can begin to notice your patterns and behaviors and reevaluate them. This reevaluation leads to the development of a healthier, more balanced version of you, one in which you can integrate the healthy parts of your wings and arrows to obtain peace and harmony. We will dive deeper into these complexities in a future video. For more videos like this, please click subscribe and share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from it. Also, I am curious what your needs are. Please put any content ideas that would be helpful for you in the comment section below, or click on my website link in the description below to contact me privately. Thank you.